So Kyle Meredith here on 91.9 WFPK, and on the line, I've got Patrick Callahan from My Morning Jacket, sir. It is, uh, it's so great to hear from you. How are you? Likewise, and uh, we're hanging in there, rounding out this crazy year and, uh, you know, feeling hopeful and thankful and all points in between. Well, I know it's been, you know, for, for any musician, I think it's, it's, I mean, for any human being, the 8 billion people on the planet, it's been an interesting one, but I know especially for the music industry as we talk about, you know, what everything's going to look like when we get out of this, but, but for you, like, when was the last time you actually played at this point? Live? <laughs> Live was, uh, I guess it would have been Forest Hills. In August of uh, 2019, <laughs> it's been a little been bit too long. Well, so what we're talking too long. Yeah, what we're talking about here, you know, so for for right here, New Year's Eve 2020, as we can't have bands, you know, live on on stage in front of mass audiences like we would, like like you all have, you know, uh, somewhat of a tradition of, of of doing around these times of year. We're heading back, and we're gonna play um, one of your more recent infamous shows. That was also from a, a New Year's Eve, and we're looking back at 2017, and and this has you in Colorado, right? This was a, a Colorado show. That's right. It was outside of Denver, Denver, and oh, sorry, Boulder. I'm sorry, it's between Denver and Boulder. Yeah. And so we're going to be playing from the third night. Now, as you look back on this, it wasn't a, a one night show. I mean, you guys did a what a three night run, so you had two like shows building into this. So for you know from from an artist's point of view, like having a stretch like that, that's got to be nice, right? That's the preferred model, in my opinion, because you really just set up camp and everybody gets comfortable, and you know, you're not you don't have the wear and tear of travel. It's just really nice to settle into some place and really just let it loose. So, what was the mood going into that, uh, if you can recall? Well. Interestingly enough, if I'm being completely honest, it was a pretty emotional one because uh, we had decided before going into that that uh, we were going to go on an indefinite hiatus. So there was a lot of emotion going into those shows because the last bookings that we had that we were uh, fulfilling obligations for were that was that New Year's run and then the uh, one big holiday uh, following that in March. And so, you know, we were going into it. It was it was bittersweet because we didn't know we didn't know what the future held if we were going to be a band anymore, or if those were going to be some of the last times we were playing those songs together. So there was a there was a lot of weight to it, but with that comes a, a lot of intention. So you're literally, you know, we were going into that mixing up the set lists and and just putting the energy into those songs like they might be the last time they're ever played. So. There's a lot of I, I'd be interested to listen back to that. I haven't listened to the recording of this, so I, I I just remember playing it and thinking, just feeling very deeply in the moment of uh, the improv moments and and uh, you know just sharing sharing the stage with those guys is such a special thing that we all hold so dearly together. Just a lot of emotion going going into that I mean, three show run. Yeah, that's got to be an interesting way to. Uh, sure, approach a so a show, but but even as you're saying the songs too, because you know at, the, at that point, I guess Jacket had been a band what around 15 years, and and I don't know the reasons why specifically why you all decided it was a hiatus. May it was just fatigue or or whatever. But 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 what kind of emotional balance is that? I mean, is that a bittersweet thing? Like I can't wait to get off the road, but God, I love doing this. I mean, what what are you juggling in that moment? <laughs> well, it's you know, there's a lot of that with any touring group that's been doing it that long you know we've we've kind of it's just a it's a very long relationship so uh, you know i think we just it was bittersweet yeah um it it was uh there's already like an element of a page turn with any new year's eve uh festivity that you throw so it was a page turn on many levels because Mm -hmm. after that and then after that one big holiday we went dark for you know a year and a half so yeah i mean just just going at it uh, with a, a lot of uh, some heavy heart and some hopeful heart and just being thankful for uh, the road that led up to that moment and wondering what the future held. And I, I should also point out, and I, I'm only really building the suspense here to get into the show, but 
But sort of, <laughs> I, I don't want to play light on this when I say insult to injury, but Charles Bradley was also supposed to open this show, right? And this was right as he passed away? Oh, that's right, yes. Yes, yeah. that was uh, that was brutal. We're all fans of his, and that was, uh, that was a loss that, you know, sent a ripple through the music world and just to have we were so excited to have him open the show in fact we were <laughs> we were wondering if it was career suicide that got put on quite a performance uh following his act would have been a <laughs> you know would have been a feat to, uh, to to take on but uh we were just really looking forward to spending time with him and try to do some kind of collaboration and you know it's just when you when you get that kind of news it, it just uh breaks your heart but we're Speaking of giving thanks, we're just thankful that that guy gave all that he gave. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we were looking forward to to taking it in as fans. Well, you know, I bring that up just to kind of echo what you're saying, the emotion going into the show, because it does end up being this incredible, incredible night. Uh, And I'll say, you know, a few interesting points about it. Uh, You all do this intro video, Martin Luther King Jr., at that point talking about isolationism and, and, you know, preaching the word of love as, as he did. It's interesting always to look back at just a few years ago because you just think of how much, you know, crazier things got. (laughs) But you were in the thick of it. Like, like, what would you even tell yourself at that, like that guy now, like when they thought, (laughs) oh, this is so bad? I don't know. Well, you know, I think about that a lot. Like what, what kind of warnings I would give to the me of a couple of years ago if I had the opportunity. And I don't know what I would say, to be honest, because I would want me to live a, a life not not uh bracing myself for the you know current situation that we we're in uh I, I would have just said you know you might want to buy some toilet paper <laughs> um up. you might want to stock up on some toilet paper and some lysol and uh but uh, all joking aside yeah uh, it, it seems just like when you're looking back on something like this it, it all seems so trivial like at the time, it felt so heavy, but gosh, compared to to what we've just been through as a as a race, I don't know what I would say to him. Yeah, just enjoy the moments while you have them and live them like they're your life. Well, all of that it, it does play out once again in the show, uh, especially with covers. Uh, there's so many great moments that that are are featured cover songs throughout this. You know, it's with uh, uh, MLK Jr. and mine. I think with him in mind, at least, that uh, you all pull out all you need is love and what the world needs now is love. And and I guess, oh, yeah. yeah, so so before I go further into the covers, like, there were so many picked, and that's that's something that you all have done through the years. Uh, this was also your first time playing uh, uh, Sly's Thank You For Let Me Be Myself and Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. What were the conversations <laughs> there? I mean, we just, we have a, we have a, a history of doing covers and, as you said. So we always try to throw stuff like that in these uh, special occasion shows. And it's really just the conversations begin with where we are mentally and emotionally, what we've been listening to. And uh, I mean, we're just, we grew up huge Janet Jackson fans (laughs) and Sly Stone fans. And that song Rhythm Nation is a Sly Stone. uh, Thank you for letting me be myself. It's a, it's a sample of this little section between the chorus and the next verse. So we just riffed on that after a couple of verses in, in the Sly song. It just broke into Rhythm Nation. And uh, I can tell you right now, the fifth and sixth grade me was pumped because <laughs> when that album came out, I wore that thing out. That album was a massive Absolutely. piece of the puzzle for me. Um, but yeah, we just we just think about like intention because it is such... The, the world does need need a whole lot of love right now, and we're trying to think about the sentiment we want to send out and and uh, what's going to move people and as much as it moves us. So the, you know, we're we're thinking about a lot of details going into these set lists, yeah. especially for something like a New Year's Eve show that's such a page turn and such a tumultuous time, uh, both on a macro and micro level. There was a lot of intention in the show for sure and and for all of those songs to be speaking as much as even more so now i mean that's that's why i think you know i think that's one of the reasons why we're excited to play this you know for for the new year's eve show because i mean these are things that i think we need to hear especially right now amen to that going back on those though so you know you have songs that you're debuting here there's got to be an element of danger to that too though right i mean here's something that you don't know considering the hiatus that you're ever going to play these songs again 
like like what kind of tightrope walk is like we have to get this perfect or we just have to have fun with it <laughs> well that's a good question i i don't there's a lot of uh effort put into tightening up songs and things like that but at the end of the day we just want to deliver something that's really heartfelt and uh and you know there there weren't too many trepidations about playing new material that hadn't been heard and, and like you're saying we're like what what do we have to lose like the, some of those songs we were just like we would just love to play them live because we never have before so it was selfish in a way just to say like you know it's been three and a half years since dents and beach let's let's break these out you know and and have fun with them so yeah it it's just kind of we just approach every show with the same thing of we're just going to go in with uh our eyes closed we're gonna we're gonna hold hands we're gonna jump off the cliff together and, and see what happens and again you know i could i could point out i mean the extended jams of like phone went west uh, magic bullet made its live debut that night and of course one big holiday wraps it up and here three nights i don't think you guys repeated one song over the entire course of three nights but to a certain point is that the given does it all have to end with one big holiday <laughs> uh, it has for you know we used to we would open with that sometimes and energetically it just gets so big that we'd be like okay well, what do you follow that with? <laughs> so it, and then it just kind of like worked its way down to the uh the close the the logical closer over time and then it's become kind of like a tradition so now there's like that kind of feeling about it where well, we're going to close with anything we're going to close with one big holiday so you know it's just kind of like it's it's become something on its own we didn't really intend for that to happen uh but now it's kind of like okay well we haven't heard one big holiday yet they're probably going to play it last uh, <laughs> and there was there was actually one show in, in uh dubs in austin years and years ago where we just decided to open with it <laughs> if we came out and played it and then walked out to the side of the stage and took a bow and walked off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> just, I forgot all about that until just now. But we may do that and then never come back one time. We'll see what happens. <laughs> be hilarious. I mean, there is... We'll there, return your money. <laughs> there's absolutely something magical, though, about when those first guitar riffs of that song hits. I mean, that's, you know... And we've got those songs with all of our favorite bands. You know, you, you, you sort of expect that. But, man... Uh, I know I've I've seen you guys do that song I don't know a hundred times and it never it never gets old. Well, I'm so glad to hear you say that because yeah. we feel really lucky that if anybody cares. Uh, we we're so fortunate to have people that that believe in us and and come out to the shows because we just really enjoy doing it. And honestly, after the time off, we we came to realize that uh, in a in a big big way, mm -hmm. uh, just how lucky we are. And, and it's just so funny to have like that time off and then get to back, get back together and make a new album. And we played those four shows and they just went so well. And we had everything kind of teed up to, uh, to start this machine back up again. And, and then lo and behold, here we are. <laughs> here we are. The lockdown of a lifetime. Yeah, I I'll take that seg too, because in the meantime, you all pull the Waterfall 2 out of the vaults. Sort of, you know, right. I, probably what was just meant to be, you know, a stopgap, here's something special, and ends up being sort of, from my perception anyway, this this own monster of its own. I mean, were you surprised by the reaction to this? We were shocked. We just thought it was, it was just hilarious because you have you put so much intention, so much time, and so much planning into releasing an album. Uh, writing an album, recording an album, releasing an album, the the record campaign, the whole nine yards, and then we just like had this sitting in a you know sitting on the sidelines, and we throw it out there, and we've never been on a radio chart as high as that. It's like we were just laughing, like the one time we don't do anything, <laughs> we just like release it out of nowhere. It goes it goes crazy. So you just never know. But we're just happy that people we're we're happy that those songs get to see the light of day we're happy that people like them and honestly i can't wait to play them it goes just within what we were talking about with regards to those songs some of those songs that were played on the new year's eve show we can't wait for these to jump out of the album and into the live realm i mean i, I you know i was a fan of the waterfall uh one not knowing it was called one back then but uh <laughs> but 
We I, didn't either. <laughs> yeah, I think I was even surprised. Like, uh, you know, if I got to rank them, I think I'm even more of a fan of The Waterfall too. And maybe it's just, you know, the perfect record for the perfect time. But these songs, they really are incredible. I mean, you know, as as a music director of, of FPK, it's trying to decide where to go to next, you know, and it's like, of course, you have your singles that roll out, but I'm looking like three, four, five songs deep going, am I going to have time to get to all of these? Because I want to. <laughs> well, thank you. That's yeah. awesome. Oh. I, I love that batch of songs. I, actually, we always have a pretty big, the only time our band ever has like a really big debate is like record sequencing and what makes it on the album. Mm-hmm. And I was pulling for a couple of these big time uh, <laughs> to go on Waterfall 1, but I'm glad it worked out the way that it did because uh, albums find themselves like a group of songs find themselves and these were outliers in the last uh, sequence but they just didn't fit on the first one it definitely sets you guys up nice for a proper return and the fans would crucify me if I didn't ask about it you you brought up you know the the new record uh, that you guys have been working on what can you tell us about that what can we expect from this I'm not sure what to expect from it yet what what happened was timing couldn't have been any better we ended up finishing the album it was recorded between 2019 and january and february of 2020 and uh i flew home on march 14th and we went into a lockdown on march 16th so we literally finished the album right before everything locked down so we have one in the can and that's gonna you know it'll it'll see the light of day this year i'm sure and Hopefully, if if this vaccine takes and the numbers start going down, we can start talking about what touring looks like. I know everybody's on the uh, everybody in the music business is kind of on the edge of their seats trying to figure out what this looks like because nobody wants to put people in at risk. We want to do this this the safest way possible, and, and uh, yeah, it's all all of it is a big question mark, and we're just kind of writing the the numbers right now. You know, we're writing what the vaccine does before we can answer any definitive answers any definitive questions so yeah but it's there and when we finally do go back out we'll have two albums of material that nobody's really heard live before so i mean we're basically never going to stop playing i guess (laughs) i guess it's just going to be like 14 hour shows and and, you know lots of uh iv drips (laughs) behind the uh the amps and stuff like that to keep us hydrated. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think anybody's going to complain. Uh, can you tell me anything about the sound? Like, does this one, do you find this one kind of goes in any direction that's noticeable to you? That's tough to answer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to really describe the sound. I think it's just kind of like the next evolution. And, uh, you know, honestly, it was a lot of stuff that Jim brought in uh, varying forms of demos. But we did a lot of a lot of the writing, you know, as a unit, just the five of us in a room in a circle. That's how we recorded this. And yeah, we were the only ones there. So it was, that's the first time we've ever done anything like that. Uh, even, even it still moves. We had a uh, Danny Kadar helping engineer and, and uh, guide us in that one. But uh, I mean, even, even the recording of it, Jim just had it link, had uh, pro tools linked up to his, his, uh, vocal booth and would just hit record and we would go so it's literally made by just the five of us wow wow so to describe the sound i don't know what to say that i never really like putting those parameters on things people just have to judge it for themselves but yeah that's the first time that the five of us have ever done anything like that and it was it was uh you know in in answer to coming out of a hiatus and feeling it out and not wanting too much outside energy brought into it as we were rebuilding ourselves so yeah it's the sound of a band rebuilding itself that works that works perfectly right there i cannot wait to hear it i I cannot wait to hear it i cannot wait to see you all live again as i'm sure everyone listening feels the exact same way oh my god we can't either on our end trust me we're gonna explode we might not make it through the first song (laughs) congratulations on the waterfall 2 and the success that it's seen this year and again, you know, we're all going to ring in the new year now with uh, with a, a New Year's Eve 2017 show, you know, that's become one of the most infamous in your recent history right here. So uh, thank you all for continuing to do all that you all do with your music. Uh, we're so happy that you've decided to stick it out, call this hiatus over and, uh, and continue. We are, too. It's an honor. It really is. So thank you for caring. And thank you for all of you who are listening. We, we love you all so much. We could never do this without you.